Hello everybody and welcome to another weekly update. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer, developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Thank you for joining me on these videos where I explore some of the things that I got up to this week and also some of the things that have gone on in the Inkscape pro project that I didn't do. Um, first of all, as usual, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my s s sponsors. Um, these are the people that are paying me for my time to work on Inkscape. Um, it's only thanks to the involvement of users that programmers like myself are able to spend time thinking about users and what they really need. So thank you all so much. Um, so let's get into what I've been up to this week. Um, first of all, as usual, for the past few, few weeks I've been doing PDF work. I have continued that as a research uh, endeavor, but I have also been doing some other work as well. Uh, there's not much to report on the P PDF front, so I'll just keep that for a future video where I can just sort of bundle it all together. Um, but let's have a talk about the actual, I think, exciting stuff that I have managed to do. Um, one of the comments about the multi-page support was that um, Inkscape's origin, which is where the zero zero mark happens, uh, it is always set to where the, the canvas origin is, i.e. not the start of the page that you're on, but the start of the first page, whatever that first page is. And this actually makes it very difficult to do many editing tasks in multi-page mode. Um, perfectly fine if you only have one page, but it gets very difficult if you are on the second page and you want to do something like align to a grid or uh, put a guideline at a specific point on a page. Um, and so I wanted to address this particular hole in the multi-page support and hopefully make uh, multi-page editing in Inkscape much better. Um, so I sat down and I identified uh, the five elements that needed to be fixed, at least superficially. Uh, one which is the, the rulers, so the rulers specify the origin as the page that you're on. Uh, the grids have to be aligned to the page that you're on. Um, the select and node tools, which both allow you to set the uh, top left and XY coordinates of various selected objects. Um, the guidelines dialog itself, so that when you double click on a gu guideline, you can actually specify an XY coordinate. And the measuring tool, which reports what XY coordinate the currently hovered object is. Um, this might not be a complete list, but this covers a lot of the, uh, the bulk of what I could find. Um, all of these things are user-facing, so internally inside of Inkscape, all of the coordinates are still based on the cam canvas origin, but for a user, you don't care about that. You care about what is available for you to put in. But I also didn't want to make this a perm permanent change, so it's a preference. The preference is that it will uh, use the origin of a selected page, but you can deselect that if you want. Um, so th this is now all fixed. A uh, big shout out to James, uh, the, the, the intern, who managed to get his uh, guides, not guides, grids refactoring. He's been working on this branch for grids refactoring for quite a, n a number of weeks. Uh, thanks to PBS and myself, we've managed to mentor him into uh, finishing the, the, the merge. This improves Inkscape considerably, removes one of the most heinous uh, uh, mixes of codes that we had in, in, in the code base. A significant piece of work for a new, new, new developer to un undertake, so well done. But it immediately feeds into this work on the origins because uh, grids needed to actually be changed and um, this his work made it a lot e easier and he actually performed the origin work himself um, so thank thank you again um, while we were or while I was looking at the at the, the rulers um, I wanted to know if there was a way we could improve the rulers further one of the, the difficulties that we have is that in Windows rendering rulers makes Inkscape slow which is <sighs> And problematic. So um, when I asked for some new designs about like how we could make rulers look, uh, we uh, had a look at some of the designs. Mykov came up with a really sweet design that I really, really want, wanted to implement. You know when you see something and you, you really see something uh, really nice and you, you want it to be, be a reality? Um, 
What this design entails is uh, the selected page is highlighted on the ruler by making it darker or lighter depending upon your theme. Uh, so you can actually see where the page starts and stops. Um, it also puts on a little in indicator for the selected uh, objects. So if you have a bunch of selected objects, you can actually see them where they are on the, on the ruler. Uh, the actual final design of uh, this particular point I don't think is, is entirely settled, uh, but I'm happy enough with the implementation as it stands. Um, but then we had to go in and had to figure out why it was being so slow. It turns out that uh, for some reason Windows uh, painting text into a widget t is expensive and rulers have a lot of little lab labels. So painting all of those labels every time you scrolled or every time you did anything uh, basically made your CPU just churn away, repainting the same labels over and over and over again. So implementing caching, uh, implementing style ca caching as well. Uh, the rulers now should be actually faster than they are on 1.2, 1 despite the fact that we've added a whole bunch of extra fe features uh, we also, I also wanted to get in the little uh, shadows, uh, which I think is a really nice touch, some nice visual improve improvements. Um, also, one thing that I didn't understand was why the labels on the left-hand side for, for the ruler were all uh, vertical, like 100 would be 1, and then 0, and then 0. Um, I've changed it so that it's now rotated text, because I think that looks nicer. But let me know in the com comments if there's actually a reason why rulers would be laid out like that. Because um, I don't want to change it uh, just because it looks nice if there's an actual technical reason. Um, okay, so that's all of the work that I've managed to do. I hope you're happy with the visual improvements. It's a small thing, but I think it's going to improve 1.3. 1, 1, 1. Uh, just gives Inkscape a little bit of polish. Um, so let's get into the uh, features and fixes on Inkscape that I didn't do. This is news from other contributors in the Inkscape pro project. Uh, first of all, a first con contribution from, uh, I'm going to try and pronounce this, Gotham Gorab, Graba? You know, that's a hard one. Uh, he fixed all overlapping boxes in the measurement tool, which is a nice visual cleanup. Um, Raphael, um, he put on a sim simple... Uh, show waiting cursor when the shape builder is busy, and he refactored the ellipse by five uh, live path effect. Uh, Rene has updated his Mac, Mac OS packaging. He keeps on looking after the Mac, Mac OS users. Nice work, Rene. Uh, Adam has actually been doing some Win Windows packaging work. He's been trying to improve the visual aesthetic of the Win Windows build, trying to use some of the Windows um, theming. Right, so they're, they're, they're more consistent. Um, Habir's branch that I think I've mentioned before where he's basically improving a whole bunch of live path effects uh, dialogues is merged. Uh, nice work, Habir. Um, and that's about it. I know there's a few other things, but they're not quite ready yet. Uh, so I'll talk about those in a future video. Um, but let me know in the com com comments. Uh, my plan is to continue doing the PDF work, obviously, um, and hopefully I will be able to show something. Well, we'll see. Uh, but thank you for watching this video, and if you'd like to support me, please do consider sp sponsoring my work. You, you can use pay Patreon, uh, buy me a co coffee, or even PayPal if you wanted. Um, and I'll see you all next week.